This is going to be a brief video response to the Morgyle. He and I have been discussing a number of things about the flat Earth, and specifically gravity and orbits. He says that orbits are not possible. Specifically, he says that two bodies rotating around each other, such as the Earth and the Moon, cannot possibly do that while rotating around another object, such as the Sun. So, I'm going to demonstrate that not only is that possible, but I can recreate it right in my own living room. Okay, first I wanted to show you just one object simulating an orbit. This is a grapefruit just swinging around on a string. There's no other forces acting on it other than the laws of physics. It's going in a circle because there are two forces really acting at the same time, centrifugal force and centripetal force. Centripetal force is the inward force. In this case, that's being applied by the string. In an orbit, that would be gravity. So if this were like the moon going around the Earth, the Earth would be in the center and it would be pulling on the moon, pulling it towards the center. We're simulating that here because we don't have objects as big as the moon, so we have to simulate it. The string is providing that force. It's pulling the orange inward. That's the centripetal force. The centrifugal force is counteracting that force because it has momentum. It's been pushed by me, so it's moving in a circle. It's sometimes called a fictitious force because it's not really a force like gravity is. It is a kind of resulting force. It's resulting from the tendency of an object to want to go in a straight line. And when you force it to go into a circle, then it, it resists that. So it pulls outward. So the string is pulling it in, but it wants to go out. So that results in a circle. So we have a balance of the centrifugal force and the centripetal force. So in this demonstration, we are actually using the actual Earth's gravity to simulate the gravity in the center of the orbital system. This is because the Earth's gravity is pulling straight down on the grapefruit, but the string prevents it from going straight down, so it does the next best thing. It pulls it inward. So that downward force of the actual gravity being resisted by the string results in an inward force giving us our centripetal force in this case. So that's how this simulation works. Okay, now I'm demonstrating a two-body orbit, such as the Earth and the Moon. Now, notice how I've just uh, given them a little spin, and they're orbiting around each other. Uh, now, we usually say that the Moon revolves around the Earth, but really they both revolve around each other. They revolve around a point, which is the center of gravity of the two objects, called the barycenter. In the case of the Earth-Moon system, since the Earth is much more massive than the Moon, the barycenter is actually within the diameter of the Earth. But if you were really to see closely the orbit of the Earth and the Moon, you would see that the Earth does wobble a little bit because they are rotating around a barycenter. Okay, now we get to the three-body orbit. This is the thing that you say is impossible. Now I know you're going to say there's only two bodies here. What are you talking about? No, there's really three. The Earth is the third body in this demonstration. The Earth is providing the gravity pulling straight down. And that pulls the entire system toward the center of where the string is hanging. So by giving the Earth-Moon system, my fruits, a little twist... I just twisted the string, by the way. You can do this experiment yourself, and I hope you will. I twisted the string around so that they're going to tend to spin around each other, and then I gave the main string a spin around a central point, and this is the result. And you can see what you say is impossible is happening right here in my living room with uh, just the laws of physics. The Earth-Moon system rotates around a central point, and that central point rotates around the center of gravity, in this case would be the sun. So this is how it works. The, if you look at the path of the, the moon, you will see that it does go in kind of a corkscrew path, like you say. But there's not a problem. All it knows is that it's being pulled. It's being pulled by the Earth's gravity, and the two of them together are being pulled by the sun's gravity. It's constantly being pulled. You said things in your video like, uh, it has to catch up with the Earth, or that it uh, uh, 
somehow that uh, gravity has to take over at some point. No, gravity doesn't take over. It never stops. It's constant. It's constantly pulling on the moon and pulling it around the Earth and the two of them pulling around the very center of the Earth-Moon system and that whole thing is pulled around the sun. It is absolutely no problem. You just don't understand it. I've demonstrated it with just two fruits and some string and you say it's impossible. This is how it works. This is how orbital mechanics works. It is not impossible. I also have it here for you. I've shown it from the bottom view. So you can see that, yes, indeed, the lemon does go in a corkscrew path. There's nothing pushing that other than the laws of physics. Gravity, centrifugal force, and centripetal force do it all. Just like it's doing it here in my living room, it does it out in space. Your biggest objections are just nonsense. They don't make any sense. It actually works perfectly fine. You just don't understand it.